It's been almost five years since I posted my first video on this channel. This journey has been incredible, and the process of creating content for you has helped me develop so much as a climber and coach. As I approached the 200,000 subscriber mark, I wanted to do something as a thank you to my viewers. So I wrote a book, and I want to give it to you for free. I thought it would be fitting to take my most popular video, How to Maximize Your First Year of Climbing, which was posted four years ago, and update it into an ebook with my most current knowledge and experiences. Writing this book was a labor of love and transformed the three tips from the YouTube video into seven in-depth chapters on how you can improve faster, avoid plateaus, and reach your potential. This book is the accumulation of not only my own experiences, but also has insights from pro climbers, top athletes in other sports, and mentors throughout my life. There are actionable steps you can take from each chapter, as well as videos to accompany them. Again, this ebook is free and my gift to you. You can check it out using the link in the description. I sincerely hope it helps you to realize your potential in climbing. Now, on to the video. This is Sion from Movement for Climbers, and in this video, I'll be demonstrating the five signs you have poor technique. There are plenty of variables that come into play when it comes to sending a climb, such as strength, fitness level, and of course, technique. While some of these can be measured or controlled, technique is often the most difficult one to quantify. We may be climbing harder, but are we actually climbing better? This video will go over some of the most common indicators of poor technique. The first sign you have poor technique is that we can hear it. Noise is often the primary indicator of bad movements. And by noise, I don't mean power grunts. That is the noise of my feet hitting the wall or a hold. It's a very common sound from people with poor technique. This audible impact of hitting the foothold or the wall could be due to a few reasons. Absent-minded footwork, moving from an off-balance body position, and lack of body tension. One of the best drills for reducing noise in your footwork is silent feet. The aim of this drill is to climb by setting your feet on footholds while making zero noise. This will force you to intentionally decelerate your foot as it approaches a hold and place it as softly as possible. Make sure to keep an eye on your foot until it's fully contacted with the foothold before looking away. The pacing of your climbing may change a bit as a result, but you'll be training your body to move deliberately and accurately. Along with having noisy feet, the next sign of poor technique is creating a lot of impact with the hands. While you can't hear this as clearly, you can definitely feel it. There may be several reasons why you're hitting a handhold so hard. Two of the most common ones I've noticed are, one, poor lock-off strength. This is more apparent on climbs with static moves. And two, poor timing. This manifests on climbs with more dynamic movements like dead points. There are two drills you can do to address each of these weaknesses. The first one is called hover hands. This drill involves you climbing a boulder where you hover a hand for three seconds over a target hole before making contact. It's best to do this with a bent arm for each position in order to emphasize that lock-off technique. Not there. Pick climbs with shorter static movements on decent holds. This drill called soft hands is designed to improve your timing. On a vertical to slightly overhang boulder with more dynamic moves, do the climb while contacting the handholds as softly as possible. Pretend like the holds are brittle. Be delicate and time your hand movements so that you arrive at each hold with as little speed as possible. This will work on your timing, body tension, and the dead point technique. Do not lock off any moves like you did on the hover hands drill. Use a bit of momentum and learn to control your contact. Hmm. 
is exciting when you cut feet and hit a move worthy of a climbing poster. But it's also a bit worrisome when your feet come off without you intending to. The next sign of having poor technique is having your feet cut unintentionally. The more our body gets extended, the harder it is to maintain tension through our connection points. When we do reachy dynamic movements, we tend to place all of our focus to our visual target, the handhold that's just a bit far away. When we do this, it causes us to disengage the lower body, especially the feet. When there's no pressure on the feet, they'll naturally come off. Mind the Feet is a drill designed to shift that attention from your hands to your feet. On a steep climb with bigger dynamic moves, perform each hand movement while keeping your mind totally engaged on your feet. Pay attention to maintaining constant pressure throughout the toes while your body extends. This will ensure that you keep tension and prevent the feet from cutting. Climbing should be a good balance of instinct and control. Sometimes when we offer too much control, it can overcomplicate the climb. The next sign of having poor technique and decision making is making too many movements and adjustments. When we make too many movements on a climb, we stifle our flow and break our rhythm. Not only does this feel awkward, it's also very wasteful in terms of energy. Some of the reasons why we make too many movements on a climb can include poor sequencing, a bad habit of constant readjusting on handhold, or the unwillingness to use a wider range of techniques like a cross in place of a match. One Touch is a drill that trains you to make a decision and stick with it. There are three rules. No matching, no foot swaps, and no extra hand adjustments. Of all the drills, this one has the most variables to focus on because climbing cleanly and efficiently is a skill that needs deliberate attention to improve. First, focus on shortening your move count by using more advanced techniques like the cross and step through to link moves. Apply different types of flags to avoid doing too many foot swaps. Once your sequence is optimized, then focus on climbing it as cleanly as possible, contacting each hold with accuracy and intention. You're stiff as a board. The last sign you have poor technique is a bit subtle and hard to detect. You'll often feel it as an excess fatigue after finishing a climb. If you watch footage of yourself climbing, you might notice that you're a bit stiff. This style of climbing looks controlled, but is quite wasteful in terms of energy. Most of my movements are very pull-centric, and my upper body spends a lot of time under tension. This can be effective for a few moves, but isn't very sustainable as the difficulty and quantity of the moves increase. I feel like they're stuck in the mood almost. There's a drill you can do to help loosen up your climbing. It's called sag and push. The sag and push is a great way to offset that stiff, pull-centric style of climbing with some more elastic, push-centric climbing. Get a little loose and set up each move by sagging your body down in the direction opposite of the target hold. Then focus on initiating the movement by pushing through the toes while simultaneously pulling with your hands. You should feel like a rubber band getting stretched out and then being released with a bit of momentum. Those were the five signs of having poor technique and the drills you can do to fix them. You can come back to this video every now and then to gauge your technical climbing. Remember that technique is a perishable skill and one needs to consciously make the efforts to refine and improve. Thank you for watching and until next time, move better, climb harder.